Hello everybody, good evening and welcome into Dog Zone where we look back at an action-packed week in Greyhound Racing and we also look forward to the preludes of both the New Zealand Cup and the Galaxy that kick off on Thursday night at Addington, Friday at Hattrick Raceway and also Sunday at Monaco. So plenty to get through on the show as usual. Joining us is Mark Rozanowski. Rozo, not only an action-packed week last week but uh, certainly the road to the Cup about to make its way underway as well this week. Yes, yeah, certainly, Andy. Uh, Greyhound Racing never sleeps these days. We're busy with numbers of meetings, and it seems we just keep rolling from one feature to another, which, of course, is good. And what's happened with these uh, preludes around the country with uh, the opportunity for dogs to travel one less time uh, down to Addington by contesting uh, these preludes closer to home? It does give us a longer period of focus at the New Zealand Cup and Galaxy and given the nature of them being part of Cup Week and indeed uh, their prestige and the stakes attached to them, Andy, I think that's got to be a positive thing. It certainly does and like you said it's certainly easier on those travelling greyhounds to only have to come down two weeks instead of the three and that quick back up from the first round of heats to the semi-final can be pretty tough especially with that travel. Before we get into that let's take a look back at last week firstly the New Zealand racing series events that took place at Cambridge on Thursday. The first of them over the 747 metres taken out by the Jean and Dave Fahey. Opawa racing bred Opawa Hillary and Rosso, she was a, a short priced favourite for it, but gee, things were looking a little bit ugly into the first turn. Oh, for sure. There she is in the black rug. Gold Star Sydney ahead of her, Go Angel as well. She had got off the box as well, but taken a few bumps early, then down the back straight after being flushed wide, she drives between runners. She's still got some work to do here, obviously, Andy, and she does it extremely well. Gold Star Sydney hanging in there on the pink rug uh, to make it a Canterbury Quinella and Go Angel. Uh, down the outside into third. Just a really good race, Andy. And from the winner, of course, she went to Perth as our representative in the Nationals over there. And this was her first win since. And I think it was an important statement. And we're not far away from the rescheduled Group 1 Wanganui distance heats as well. So timely for her to be back in form. But it wasn't just the fact that she won that, Andy. It's the way that she won that. That was a very, very good performance. It certainly was, and looking forward to future staying events, I thought the run of Little Apple had plenty of merit to it as well. Rosso, she was certainly hitting the line strong, and uh, that stands her in good stead for upcoming staying events. It certainly does, and things have opened up, of course, with Dinah Weslin uh, being back in Australia and retired now. She's come into season, so unfortunately she had to be withdrawn from a Sydney Cup heat, and she's one of five finalists for the New Zealand Greyhound of the Year that will be announced on Saturday night uh, here in Wellington. So it does open things up, and of course Sapawa uh, Hillary was second in the New Zealand Stayers Cup to Dinah Weslin, and with performances like that, that sheer grittiness and determination to win from a greyhound that quite often has looked like a front-running stayer, that's very encouraging for the future. Let's now look at the 457 metre version of the New Zealand Racing Series. This one taken out by the Karen Walsh prepared Thrilling Amigo. He's in the white rug. Karen nailing the Quinella with Thrilling Uma in the black and white stripes of box number two, making her way into second. Gee, Rosa, this is some kind of win from Amigo. He's back in the pack there. He cops a few checks into the turn. And talking about grittiness, he's certainly got plenty of that. Lit a Quinella here, and like you say, he was slow early, which he can be, runs into a few bumps, and he hadn't won for a handful of starts. So a really encouraging performance again. Thrilling Irma, uh, again, just a, a really nice performance, and they gunned down Athenaeus, who hasn't won over the middle distance, but has got uh, really good speed and goes around in a sprint again tomorrow. So looks a pretty good chance there. And fourth over was Stefano, who rattled through the grades recently. Uh, with five straight wins. Andy, I thought it was a, a really nice final, highlighting again uh, the New Zealand bred dogs that we have here in New Zealand to contest an advanced series. Thrilling Amigo, of course, the track record holder there. He had to be withdrawn from the Manawatu Cup final with a minor hip support injury. I don't think he'll be away long, but that was unfortunate because he looked a live chance there. But as I say, Andy, um, just having a look at those New Zealand racing series, good contests on the track, quality dogs running good times. The New Zealand breeding industry has come a fair way in the last few years. 
Speaking of the Manawatu Cup, let's now move forward and take a look at that. This was run on Monday at Palmerston North and the winner getting a start off the reserve bench, M Grand Park. And Roz, I think we could hear the surprise in your voice when he legged straight to the lead, M Grand Park. And I was sitting at home watching it, turned to Corey Steele and said, well, that race is over. <laughs> look, he's a, he's a strong dog and he's a quality dog, but... Uh, because he tends to get back in traffic, it has cost him. Of course, he went into the Wanganui Cup final as the favourite. He got squeezed at the first bend. He actually made a fair beginning that night too. It turned out to be too good. There he is pulling out from Hay Fernando, who since coming back has had... Uh, has been racing well over the shorter distances, and that was his 10th clear run there, which is good news for the connections. And Arden Emgrain's rising five, and he continues to race really well. Andy, um, the two heat winners were kind of out of play early. She's for us, who was strongly backed into favouritism after she came off the ballot herself last week into box one and won a heat, then won very well on Friday night, beating big time Rod, and went into the favourite and went in as favourite there on Monday. But her and big time Shadow were together early and effectively out of play, and with M Grand Park in front of them, that was it. Now M Grand Park is on the ballot for the Cup prelude this coming week, but I think he's a very serious player, even though he's got a hard road ahead, trying to get three clear runs. He is a genuine New Zealand Cup contender, and of course he's won a uh, South Island Championship heat down there, and the amazing Chase Consolation, and it does appear like Addington's quite a nice track, and a better track for him than what Hattrick is. Yes, yeah, certainly exciting times ahead for the park, no doubt about that, and uh, exciting to see what he's going to uh, do through that Cup series. Speaking of the Cup, let's take a look uh, at the preludes now, the first of them to get underway at Addington tomorrow night, and uh, this is... Uh, option 128, it's race number 9 on the card at 7.22, start the show. He comes up your favourite, $1.65, Dyna Varsity in the market at 4.80 and Avenger Bale potentially the value in the race at a quote of $8. We're going to take you back to have a look at start the show, this is him winning his last start, the Garden City Classic, he's the black and white drops of box 2 but Rosso I think the key here, taking a look at Avenger Bale off the pink, he's unlucky into this first turn and if he can get an ounce of clear air around this first bend in this prelude, he's certainly not out of it. No doubt about it. He does appear to be the value there, Andy. I mean, clearly start the show. I think it's entitled to be favourite off the inside and winning this comfortably. Uh, Dyna Varsity getting around ego maniacal there late. And, of course, Avenger Bale just completely, as you say, taken out of it at the first bend. And we had been very encouraged by his run the week before. And even though he got tailed off there, Andy, after that check... That outing will have done him good. It was a five-dog field to get into that much trouble is unfortunate, and he comes up with box number eight again. That was the Robinson Rose Bowl, Andy, and it goes back to 1969, that race, and it's been won by many of the greats uh, throughout the years. And, oh, look, a bit alarmed to see only five dogs go around, and to be perfectly frank. But, however, it was won by a very nice dog. And uh, Ray Adcock has another genuine New Zealand Cup contender here with Start the Show. But I'm with you, Andy, in terms of the value in that market, it does appear to be Avenger Bale, even at his advancing age. And, of course, the noticeable dog missing from that uh, pack is Dinah Dave. Spoke to Craig on Monday and just giving him a week off, hoping to get uh, Avenger or Dinah Varsity through to uh, those semis to be guaranteed. And hopefully we'll see Dinah Dave back after a little bit of a freshen up as well. Time to move to Hattrick now, Friday evening in the running of the prelude that takes place there. Option 172, the final field market. This will be race number 10 on the card. 8.36, it gets underway in the Speedster. Big time Cooper, $2 is your favourite. Nature's Gent in the market, 4.50. Rod in the market at 5.50 and she's for us, $8.50. She's for us as the first Graham. We're going to take you back to have a look at. This is her being successful at Hattrick Raceway off Boston, box number six. Rosso, we know she's a Graham with a ton of early speed, but interesting into the first turn to see if she can keep up with Cooper, which not many can. No, look, Andy, she's led that comfortably in a 5.03. Now, I, I thought Big Time Rod would win this race. He had to work hard to get around Tyson's Quest, who uh, crossed him early. It was a really good run from She's for us. The week before, she'd been gunned down by Big Time Maple, who's in the black and white rug there, and she's on the up, Maple. She doesn't have a lot of experience. But Big Time Maple had led up the previous week in under five seconds and is capable of that and tends to hang out. So, look, Big Time Maple this time is on the outside of She's for us, and maybe Big Time Maple could give Big Time Cooper something to think about early. 
But Andy, big time Cooper we know when he's right on his game, he's actually sub 490, not sub 5 seconds. And on Monday at Manawa 2, he's reeled off the fastest ever sectional to the first bend. Now, twice he'd gone under nine seconds with 8.98 and 8.99. This was 8.95, and he just buries them early. you got big time Rod in there. Uh, Bruto's in there as well. Levi ends up running second. He's not in this contest on Friday night. So, Andy, based on what this dog's done, a Group 1 winner on the track... There is some speed underneath him, and if Big Time Maple can reel off a, say, a 495, 497, and let's say she's for us could improve to, say, a 5 flat, then Cooper might have some work to do early. But the way he jumped there, and if he can bring that to Hattrick, which we've seen him do before, if he's going to reel off a, a high 480s, I think he can lead and win. But what about the quality of the field, Andy, with obviously Big Time Rod in there? Uh, she's for us who was favourite in the Manawatu Cup, and I think we just write off that run on Monday and Nature's Gent off the inside, who's going to try and win the New Zealand Cup two years after he did it in 2017, and he made the semi-finals last year, Nature's Gent, and he draws box one, so he gets a real opportunity to advance through the first stage here. He certainly does. He's a phenomenal, a phenomenal animal, isn't he? Nature's gent. He just keeps finding, even uh, as he gets older, he just finds another gear and he keeps on finding. So uh, it'd be brilliant to see him make another New Zealand Cup and uh, just a super effort from Team Turnwell to keep him up for as long as they have. Right, time now to move to Auckland on Sunday at the Monaco Sports Bowl. We'll see the third of the preludes going around here and uh, we get to see Robson... Uh, going around. This will be race number 10 on the card at 3.56. Robson comes up with three. Our Rick on the back of a 600 metre victory comes up with box number four and well drawn out in eight is Cameo City. Uh, certainly perfectly drawn out there in box number eight. Robson the Greyhound we're going to take you back to have a look at. This is him winning the Waterloo Cup off box number five, the gold rug. Rosa, this is a group one effort. He gets past big time Cooper in the straight. Dinah Dave in behind him. It's a super field. And if the right Robson turns up, he's the one they all have to beat here. You yeah, no question, Andy. Look, he's had three goes at Monaco. He's tried to anticipate the jump every time. He got it perfectly the first time. Second time he got it wrong and then required a, a bit of luck to get through to that Waterloo Cup final because he had to come from so far back and there was trouble up front turning for home. But in this, he was kind of somewhere in between. It wasn't the brilliant beginning of his Monaco race day debut, but it was good enough to put him in the right position. And the way that he finished them off there was really good, obviously running past dogs like Cooper. Uh, big time Seth was in that race, and he was also un unlucky when third in another race recently, and he goes around on Friday night. And that means that the Coles have sent the Litter Brothers, Shadow and Brody, to Monaco. Now, it'll be good race experience for them. Both a little enigmatic, particularly the Shadow, and dogs that, uh, if they're caught in the right mood and catch it right early, things could get pretty interesting, Andy. But clearly, Robson the dog to beat, and it'd be nice to see him get the easy road through because he is a dog I think we very much want to see in the New Zealand Cup final. Oh, no doubt about it. And just other, another one there is our Rick, who uh, he certainly fit going into it. We know he's Group 1 performed, having run second in a Group 1 in the past. So uh, he's another one in there that's uh, just going to make that field a little bit spicy come Sunday afternoon. Well, it's now time to have a look at the Fitz Sports Bar Galaxy Preludes. Same thing, three of them to take place at Addington, Hattrick and also at Monaco. The first of them on Thursday night at Addington Raceway. Here's a look at the market. Versailles, $3.10 is your favourite over Kenilmate Peter Ramos at four sixty. Everything is in single figures here and that just shows how even this field is. We're going to take you back to have a look at Fired Up Jed. This is him winning off box eight. He beats Peter Ramos on this occasion as well. Peter Ramos shows some early speed to get the early lead. Fired up Jed able to stay wide and get around him and be too strong. Certainly an improved box draw for Jed. He comes up with box number one. Ginger Alley to his outside won't put much pressure on him early. And uh, he looks a big, big chance come Thursday afternoon or Thursday evening. Another handy and consistent sprinter going around it is Ginger Alley for Alan Joy. She raced on Tuesday uh, at Forbury as well, but this is her winning uh, last Thursday night as well at Eddington Raceway. She's the dog in the pink rug here of box number eight. She too draws up kinder for uh, her prelude, and 
If she can get a, a nice little sneak into the race, then she has to be accorded some kind of chance. She's a consistent type at the top level as Ginger Alley, and if she can get some clear air early as a chance. Versailles deserved favourite. He's won his last two, or two of his last three, sorry. Versailles is a talented sprinter when he can get things his own way. And again, he's not brilliant early, and that can let him down at times, but if he can get some clear air, then he has to be some sort of chance as well. Well, that's my prelude out of the way. Time now to move to Hattrick Raceway, where we have one going to the post on Friday evening. And Rosso, the return of Sir Dougie, is your $2.80 favourite. He's the defending champion, Andy, and it's terrific to see him back off uh, quite a bad injury. But of course, he is getting a little older, so he wasn't quite so dominant in that previous campaign. He got an injury out of the railway, bounced back from that, and yes, he did produce some wins and still some fast opening sections, but not the same dominance, and of course, that happens. We're going to have a look at last year's Galaxy just to remind us how good this dog, I'm going to say was, because I still think he's a contender and I have talked to the Colt camp about him and there's some encouraging signs on the trial track, Andy. So this was him last year, quite brilliant down there on foreign loam, if you like. And she's a ripper second who, of course, you know, was an outstanding sprinter before her retirement. Andy, uh, the Cold Kennel's reporting that Dougie's had two trials back. His opening sectionals have been really, really good. 681, 683, which has him leading this field very easily. His run homes haven't been strong. They never have been, but he's always still been able to overall post a really good time. But his overall time, 1795 and then 1785. Now, at the moment in the central districts, much like down your way, Andy, we saw how even that market was. In the central districts, no dominant sprinter at the moment. And even in the high 60s or 70s, and occasionally even 80, is winning uh, a class five sprint there. Sir Dougie will be improved by his latest trial. You would expect him to lead this comfortably. I do like the dog in the eight, Andy. Fantastic, Amy. Good sprinter, knows the track well, perfectly drawn in the eight. Dougie to set up the speed. I'm pretty keen about Fantastic Amy. I'm also very keen to see Sir Dougie get through and come galaxy time, he won't be close to last year, I don't think, Andy, but he'll be good enough, I think, to be very competitive. That's just my opinion, given his age, the injuries that he's had, but he's on an encouraging trajectory by the sounds of things. Let's move to Sunday now and the prelude to take place at the Monaco Sports Bowl. This one will be uh, race 12 on the card at 4.32 due to Byrne who we've seen once here in New Zealand and he was able to get the job done on that occasion. Uh, he comes up with box five. We've got Ashen in the red. She'll make things interesting with her tendency just to push away from the rail a touch. And then we've got Trojan Horse who's starting to find his way back into some winning form as well. And again, he'll certainly make things interesting off that outside draw. Rosso, due to burn, we're going to take a look at now. This is his debut performance here in New Zealand. White rug, box three, no early speed, but he still puts him to bed comfortably. Uh, yeah, certainly picked his way through nicely here. It opened up very well for the dog, and obviously lack of early speed, that's certainly an issue. And drawn up box number five here uh, as well. So look, a, r a really good performance first up, and I'm sure the camp are happy with that, uh, Andy, but would obviously want to jump uh, a little more quickly. Again, we've got a pretty open affair here, Andy, and the Galaxy, and that's why we've been talking about you know, young dogs like the uh, Balties and the Parwood Dyes, why we're thinking that dogs that just have that sheer raw speed, even though they lack the experience, uh, would be well worth putting into the Galaxy this year because it is just so vastly and widely open. We don't have uh, Sir Dougie. Uh, we don't, well, we're going to have Sir Dougie, but not the Sir Dougie of last year. We don't have She's a Ripper. Obviously, we don't have Swimming Goat. We don't have dominant performers like that. It is just so wide open to try and tip the winner right here. And now, I'd say, well, look, actually, a dog that's consistently running under 17 seconds like Bolty, even though it's only had a few starts, uh, could be a real chance of taking the Galaxy this year. The two Central Districts dogs there, Andy. Cheese and Chalk won a New Zealand Racing Series at Monaco. Two back, looks a chance. Had no luck on Monday at the Manawatu. Trojan Horse won that race, and as you say, he has found his way back to some better form. So they are both clearly players as well, but I'd be struggling to confidently tip out winners uh, at either Addington or Monaco. 
It certainly is hard. Two notable exclusions from that heat uh, prelude at uh, Monaco as well. Uh, the two, Jared and uh, Jared Udy and Denise Cottam, sprinters, Kiwi boy and Buddy Boom, spoke to Jared yesterday. Uh, for those who've seen it on Sunday, Buddy Boom contacted the rail. He did come off with some skin lacerations, required some stitches. He's still thinking he's a chance of getting him back and having a dig at the Galaxy, but he's going to know more in around a week's time. And Kiwi Boy just coming off with a, a slight hip support uh, problem after that run, so he'll be back as, as well and all going to plan. He'll be making his way back down here to Eddington as well to have a, have a dig at the Galaxy. So another couple of sprinters from the northern region. That will certainly add some interest come Galaxy time. All right, talking about sprinters, we're going to drop down to maiden grade now, and Dinah Trevor, 20 months on the sideline. Uh, Rosso, he comes Dinah back. He had six attempts to requalify. So Hooter ended in, and his partner Sharon Hinson certainly uh, giving perseverance to Dinah Trevor, and he gets the job done and pays them back first up. Andy, this is my favourite story of the week. I've known Howard for a long, long time. I was looking back at some of the early dogs that I can remember him racing, and they were in the late... 80s dogs like Melia Nose and Company. Well, look, at your wedding, Andy, when you married the lovely Janine Jobson, I talked to uh, Howard about this particular dog, and basically I was thinking, Hooter, you are dreaming, my friend. <laughs> you are not going to get this dog to win a race. And after six public trials, 20 months off the sidelines, the dog goes out and do that. Uh, taking my hat off to you for your perseverance. This is quite an extraordinary achievement from somebody I'm proud to say I've known for a long, long time. This dog is from a litter that's um, Dinah Vernon, uh, Dinah Walter, Dinah Monty, and most notably in Australia, Andy, Dinah Patty, who won the Australian Cup back in March. Also a Group 1 winner last year of the maturity, won 650 grand. But for me, no matter what Patty did, I'll always remember Dinah Trevor from this litter. Yeah, certainly is a big effort and well done to Howard and uh, Sharon. Certainly perseverance paid off there and Dinah Trevor getting the job and probably not the last time we'll see him on top of the podium as well. Well, it's now time to head across the ditch to Sydney and the running of the Million Dollar Chase. It takes place on Friday night coming out of Wentworth Park. Race 9 on the card, 11.35. Here's the market for it. This is available on tab.co.nz. Get it, Gizmo and Black Opium. $3.70 a piece. We're going to take you back to have a look at Get It Gizmo uh, winning his heat off box eight. 29 and 45. Rosso was the fastest heat just over the talented Black Opium 29 and 46. And come Friday night, it's going to be some sort of match race. Uh, it certainly will be. And I'm not ruling out good odds Harada either, uh, who was, well, I think she thought would have won the Nationals in Perth from the front, got gunned down by the local there. Good effort from Gizmo, wasn't it, to get right across this field. I've got huge respect for Black Opium, uh, Andy. Has the ability to cheat the draw, but again, we saw in the Nationals what can happen at the highest level when you can't find the front. And I think that makes it a, an open betting race, whatever you like. You're getting 3.7, have a crack. I think I'll be backing both Black Opium and good odds Harada there to win a certain amount. I think at their prices you can do that, Andy. Interested in your thoughts on that. Just a side note, there's free-to-air coverage of this in Australia, which is quite extraordinary. It's on Channel 9, and a couple of the co-hosts there that are bringing the Greyhound analysis, James Vandermaat, who came over, of course, for our commentator's day at Manawatu earlier in the year. And also the former host of Dog Zone, Elizabeth Whelan, will be co-hosting that Channel 9 coverage as well. So wishing them well for uh, an hour's show on primetime television in Australia around the Million Dollar Chase. Certainly is a big night of racing at Wenty Park as well. They also have the running of the Sydney Cup that takes place. This will be uh, race number eight on the card at 11.08. Notable, uh, notable exclusion from this field, certainly the talented Tornado Tears. And that means Blue Moon Rising's going around as $1.75. Boom, down $4.20. Uh, we've got Just Terms, an HQ-owned Greyhound in the market at $8.50. And Dublin Laird, who was a $100 winner, $1 winner of the heat, taking his place as well. And Ros, obviously Tornado T is not here. And not sure if you're caught up with the news. The Stipes deemed his performance uh, unsatisfactory and actually stood the Greyhound down. Yeah, it's extraordinary times, isn't it? And 
We've got some interest around stipendiary steward standing dogs down in New Zealand too that we might touch on uh, in the future here. Um, but a real shame not to see a dog like Tornado Tears because an excitement machine every time it turns out and you can choose to bet against it, uh, obviously if you so wish, but a, a decorated career for that dog. Amazing to see Ebby Ripper uh, making the ballot there. Unfortunately, she's probably not going to get in, but even at her advancing years, she can still get close to a Sydney Cup final. Looks like the inside dog, Blue, My Blue Moon Rising, hard to beat. Uh, any dog with M Grand in the name at the moment, Andy, I'm happy to back Mrs M Grand at $23. Oh, you do love your M Grands. We'll give you that. And at $23, a dollar each way, you might just be able to buy yourself a Big Mac combo on the way home afterwards as well. Right, bets of the week. Here's how we feared last week. Uh, I was one from three with a couple of minor placings as well. Rosso going two from uh, two from four with a couple of minor placings. Our Hemi getting home at 540 uh, Pip got Billy Bride home, one from three, four dollars and thirty cents, and Blakey getting uh, Judah Burn home on Sunday night at uh, Sunday afternoon at two dollars and sixty cents. Rosso, not a bad week to be fair. Yeah, nice to uh, have the uh, winners shared around there and uh, enough juice around them, I think, too, to. Uh, make a dollar there. I'm going to Friday night and M. Grand Rose drawn probably wider than I would like him. He was unluckily beaten last week, but he can, you know, I, I guess the writing was potentially on the wall the way that field was drawn. I thought he'd get away with it and he didn't. Uh, but I think he can make up for it on Friday. Queen Big Leg looks back in the zone uh, with a, a really good win last Friday night and then again, on Monday. Cheeseball draws the one. He's not the complete product, this dog, but I think he can win that race from there nonetheless. Uh, fantastic Amy, I mentioned earlier, I think to beat Sir Dougie there at reasonable odds on what they put up. And Big Time Kiss, I'm looking to Monday. Not puke her up though, we'll puck her up with Big Time Kiss. And um, has got some early speed to beat that draw. Philippa is going to the bridge on Thursday. And the bridge brigade is Raylene, number one in race number five. Again, number one, Captain Kev, race nine. Uh, thrilling talk, race 10. That's a really tidy field. Keysile out in the eight in that. And it's a stroll walk in the park. That's at Monaco on Sunday. Here's a look at where Blake Stothart's looking for the next week. Smash over at Eddington on Thursday. Comes up with box number one. He's going with Peter Ramos in uh, the prelude for the Galaxy. Comes up with box number five and no frenzy on Friday at Eddington. Box four in the seventh. Here's a look at mine, downgraded and dangerous. Dizzy Banjo in the third of the day at Eddington on Thursday night. And then we'll turn to Friday. Humbush Tassan, I think he can find his way to the early lead in the second. Ginger Cream Fizz with a little bit of an each way bet, pretty consistent of late. And go move fast. He was pretty unlucky uh, on Tuesday. I think he can turn the tables and get the job done come Friday afternoon. Well, that's about all we've got time for here on Dog Zone. Rosso, thanks very much for joining us once again. And Friday night, I'm sure we'll all be tuned in to watch the preludes out of Patrick with you calling the runners home there. Yeah, well, that uh, cup prelude in particular is very competitive, Andy, and I think the pick of the race is this week. And I hope we can start igniting the fever around Cup Week and the Cup and the Galaxy, Andy, with these preludes. And, of course, there isn't a meeting going by at the moment without a, a really exciting dog coming through the grades, particularly down your way, uh, Andy, to see what some of these youngsters can continue to run. So at the moment, it's hard to miss a day of greyhound racing. Well, that's all we've got time for here on Dog Zone. We'll be back next week with more reviews and previews of greyhound racing from around the country. But until then, happy punting.